Hi, today I'd like to answer a very common question I get from newbies to the channel, which is A. How do I use a DC power supply to power a MacBook? B. Why would I want to use a DC power supply to power a MacBook? Let's start with the why. There's two answers for the why. The first answer to why I would use a DC power supply to power a MacBook is that this $80 MagSafe that you would buy on Apple's website is pretty flimsy. They die fairly often, and especially if you're doing what we do, which is plugging them into liquid damage machines or machines that have short circuits, you're bound to go through a lot of these, and it gets tiring after a while to continuously spend $80 on something that breaks. The second, as to the why, is that by using a DC power supply, I can intuitively tell exactly how much power the device is using. So for example, I've hooked up a DC power supply to this MacBook that I have down here, and as you can see, at 18.5 volts, I can see that this MacBook is pulling two amps. And as you can see in a video that I linked to below, the amount of amperage a device is using can very often be a so linked to the type of problem it's having. The same way that a doctor is going to tell if you have an itch over here, you may have this illness. If you have this temperature with your fever, you may have this illness. That's the same thing here. Oh, if this chip is bad, it, the device may be drawing this many amps. If that circuit is bad, the device may be drawing that many amps. It's a way to kind of try and narrow down what's wrong. Once I realize that there's a pattern, every time this chip is blown, the device is drawing this many amps, I don't have to go through and repeat that same troubleshooting process every single time. I can just go, huh, the last five times it was drawing 0.09 amps, chip A was corroded. So when I see it's drawing 0.09 amps, rather than spend 20 minutes troubleshooting, I can check chip A within the first minute, and bam, I have a solution to my problem. Now, the next question is going to be, how do I connect this? Uh, how do I connect a MacBook to a DC power supply? The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this old dead DC power supply and I'm going to cut it up. So I'm just going to switch over the cameras over here so that you can see what I do and how I would hook this up to the DC power supply. So here we have the MagSafe adapter. So on this end, this is the plug end. We don't need this. And this end is the end that's going to be the MagSafe end, which plugs into the laptop. So we are going to cut right over here at the end that plugged into the laptop. We do this, and I should be able to zoom in a little so that you can see here. There we go. You'll be able to see all the flux and chips that have fell into my keyboard at this angle. So what I'm going to do, take that off the screen, and I'm going to strip the wire a little bit using these Exolite 175M fine tip snippers. Now, within this, you're going to see, let's see how far can I zoom? with this beautiful new zoom lens that I got. Okay, that, that's, that's pretty sick, that's pretty sweet. I can zoom just about all the way and onto the desk. Oh man, that is one cool zoom lens. Anyway, so we are going to untwist this section. So you're gonna have a silver aluminum wire, which is here, and then you're going to have a white wire, which is here, and the white one is gonna be insulated. So this here is your ground. That's going to go to the black ground tab of your DC power supply. This white tab is your positive end. That's going to go to the positive or the red pin of your DC power supply. And this obviously already is already stripped. It's already going to conduct electricity. And this end over here is... Focus, you bastard. There we go. This end over here is not stripped. It's insulated. So you got to cut... You just have to cut that insulation up a little bit and then you'll be able to plug it into your DC power supply. There we go. This would be my DC power supply over here. So we have my black ground, red over here, which would be positive. So what I would do is just unscrew each one, and you would take the ground, put it into the black part, and the red put that to the white wire in the MagSafe, and then plug it in. As you can see, I've already got two MagSafes wired up here, one for the older MacBooks with MagSafe 1, another for the newer MagSafe uh, with MagSafe. All right, now one detail that you have to be careful with is the type of adapter that you chose. You should be using an 85 watt adapter if this is intended for general purpose troubleshooting. Now you may wonder, why does it matter the wattage of the adapter 
when we've essentially cut the power supply part of the Apple charger out of the mix. If we're not using this anymore, if we've said goodbye to this and we've attached just the tip to the power supply, then what should matter is the power delivery ability of the power supply, not that of the charger that we're no longer using. Well, the problem with that is that in the tip over here, the part that's actually gonna plug into the MacBook, there is circuitry. This wouldn't be Apple if it wasn't unnecessarily complicated. So in the tip of the charger, there is a circuit that is going to talk to the computer on the wall. Now, in that circuit, it's going to tell the computer whether or not it's a 45 watt charger, a 60 watt charger, or an 85 watt charger. The 45 watt charger is designed to only work for MacBook Airs. The 60 watt charger was designed to work on MacBook Airs and also 13 inch MacBook and MacBook Pros. And the 85 watt charger was designed to work on all of those plus the 15 and 17 inch MacBook Pros, which typically use quad core processors and discrete GPUs that draw much more power. So if we take this charger wire off of a MacBook Air, the tip is going to tell the computer I'm a 45 watt MacBook Air power supply, don't draw too much power from me, even if we attach that to a power supply that's capable of delivering 50 amps. If the computer itself is going to think that we've attached it to a teeny weeny power supply, and it's not gonna make use of all the power that's available in the power supply unit. And the way you can tell what type of circuitry is in the tip, the way you could tell if you got a real 85 watt charger is simple. When you turn on the computer, you're going to go to the Apple, you click about this Mac, it brings up this little window over here, you click system report, after you click system report, it brings up this hardware profile, you go down to power, and then it's gonna say wattage over here. The reason I bring this up is because I would say a good 99% of the people watching this video are getting their charges off of eBay and Amazon because they don't wanna give the Apple 80 bucks. And hey, I don't blame you. You don't want to give Apple 80 bucks for a charger. You want to buy the $20 to $30 one on eBay. Well, I know it was sold to you as an 85 watt charger, but guess what? They were actually taking the tips off of 60 watt or 45 watt power supplies, attaching it to their knockoff power supply, and the computer winds up thinking that it's actually a 60 watt power supply. So if you've ever wondered why it is a 15 or a 17 inch machine, doesn't turn on when the battery is dead, even when you have it plugged into a charger. The reason for that is that the computer thinks that it's plugged into a 60 watt charger because the tip is improper. So in order for this to be compatible with all the different devices, I would suggest you get set up with an 85 watt charger because a 15 or a 17 inch machine often are not going to turn on if you do not plug them into an 85 watt charger if the battery is not present. If the battery is not present on a 15 or 17 inch MacBook Pro, and you plug it into what it thinks is a 45 watt charger, it will not turn on. And even if you have fixed the board, you'll still think it's dead because it's not turning on. One of the ways that you can tell, again, you go to the Apple, you go about this Mac, you go system report, you go power, and it'll tell you the wattage over there. Another way to tell is if the SMC underscore adapter underscore enable is present. If SMC adapter enable is not present on a working board with a good SMC, you're probably using the wrong charger. That's about it. So that is how you would use a DC power supply to power a MacBook. You just take any one of your old dead mag safes, you just cut off the end, you plug it into the DC power supply. 99% of the time, the issue when you have a dead power supply is not with the wire and it's not gonna be with this. It's often going to be with the brick dying. And sometimes you have cases where the cable is really mashed up, and in those cases, I, would, I wouldn't recommend that you use it. Obviously, if it's all tearing and everything, just, just throw the thing away. But if you have dead chargers around your shop and you want to make use of them, here's how you make use of them by attaching them to a DC power supply. I'm going to be leaving links below to the power supplies that I recommend buying. This one that I have here is a little bit more expensive, and the reason it's more expensive is because it has functionality that allows me to control it from a computer that functionality also allows me to show you the amperage and voltage in Open Broadcaster. For most of you that are not doing videos, that's going to be a waste of money and you're just going to want to go for the cheaper power supply. Don't go for something that's way too cheap because those are going to send ripple currents and voltages and do all sorts of nasty stuff. Now, you can also use this method here to power up an iPhone. So we also have for sale these little cables that you can buy here. 
at store.rossmangroup.com. I'll make sure to leave a link below to that, which allows you to plug this into an iPhone's battery connector. So this is a nice little cable over here. It's nicely sleeved. It reports proper temperature information, supposedly. You never know. Stuff's from China. To the iPhone, and I can show you what that looks like under the microscope here. And you can kind of see over here, it's got these little connectors that will attach to the battery slot of an iPhone, battery connector of an iPhone, and then you can power the iPhone using a DC power supply. It has got these little banana plugs that you use over here. So this, pa this little cable has these little banana plugs. You would just take them and you plug the red end into the red part of your DC power supply, the black end into the black part of your DC power supply. You would set the voltage to the iPhone battery voltage around 3.7, 3.8 volts, and then you would plug this end into the battery socket on the iPhone, and then you would be able to power the iPhone using the DC power supply rather than having to go around your shop and try to find a battery that you know works. And you'd also be able to see the amount of amperage that it's drawing directly on the power supply, which is pretty cool. Obviously, uh, try to avoid making the mistake of plugging in your iPhone using MacBook Voltage. It won't exactly be a happy iPhone. So that is it for today. That is how I use a MacBook uh, a DC power supply to power a MacBook to put the voltage on screen and open broadcaster. That's why I do it. And as always, I hope that you learned something.